Alistair, what's life been like since it was announced you were signing for Celtic? Oh, it's been hectic. Um, I've tweeted about it a couple times, actually, but it's no joke. They, uh, the Celtic fans nearly broke my phone. Um, just, the, just the outpouring of love has been pretty crazy. Um, you know, that doubled up with being participating in a World Cup at the same time was a really just crazy time in my life. Um, but no, no, just super excited to get here. Um, everyone's been so warm and welcoming. Uh, even in the town center, just walking around, you know, people are already coming up and saying, "Congratulations, mate! You signed for the biggest club in the world." So it's been a it's been a pretty unique and special welcoming, I'd say. As things stand, you're the the third international right back at the club. What mm-hmm. have you been told so far about how you fit in and and the way things will look going forward? Um, you know, just that nothing's going to be given; everything's going to be earned. Um, and I think that that's something that all young aspiring footballers want—just an opportunity. Um, and that's something that this coaching staff has been very strong about is that, you know, we're, we're trying to play a certain way. We want to bring in some young, talented players that, you know, have an edge to them. Um, I th- think I fit that mold, but the other two right backs do as well. So I think it'd be great. You know, I'm just here to fight for my place and hopefully earn some minutes. You came up against Josip Juranovic in the, in the World Cup. Any chance to, to speak to him about it or was it purely business? No, I did actually talk to him a little bit after. Um, just said hello and, and uh, he was really good about coming out of his way to make sure he came and found me even after a, a big 4-1 win for them. Um, he's a great player. He was, he was, I thought he was one of the best players in the pitch and he's been showing that all World Cup. So, you know, let's hope that Croatia can keep doing what they're doing and, and you know, potentially lift the World Cup at this point. Can I ask you, when did you first become aware of Celtic's interest and what attracted you specifically to coming to this club because I assume there was interest from, from elsewhere yeah no um, Celtic probably came up about two months ago I'd say um, and it's funny because at that point so at Montreal and um, Victor Wanyama I was actually I brought it up to him just kind of low key just hey you know there there might be some interest from Celtic what are your thoughts on that and he said look He's played some massive clubs, um, some Premier League teams as well, and he said there's nothing quite like Celtic. You know, it's everywhere he goes, it's, it's hail, hail. And, and still this day when he's back over here, you know, he gets recognized most of the time, not for being a Spurs player, but for playing for Celtic. So he said, look, it's the fans, it's unbelievable. Um, just the size, the stature of the club, how well known it is all around the world. Um, it's a place that you want to be. Um, and he thought that it would be a great fit for me. So when I heard that glowing recommendation, it was it was my heart and my mind were pretty set on Celtic. So that's something that, that you that you really relish. It's not something that's going to make you a little bit fearful of the kind of pressure heaped on you. You're looking forward to embracing that, are you? No, look, um, that pressure is something, again, I think if you're a footballer, you know, any professional athlete, you want to be put in those kind of, you know, experiences and opportunities where you're put under that pressure because that's where you really get to find out who you are. Um, so, again, you know, talking to the manager, he said, look, go and enjoy the World Cup. Um, enjoy being out there. Enjoy the matches. But at the same time, is once you get a taste for that, it's hard to ever go back to something less than that. And he said that that's why he thinks that Celtic is a great fit for me. Um, it's that, you know, it's 60000 every week. You know, there are pressures there constantly. But... You can, you're going to relish that. You're going to enjoy it. And at the end of the day, is that once you get a little bit of a craving for it, you can't get enough of it. So that was a big thing for me as well. And just a final one for me. It, it is also a fit for you, the Celtic style of play. It's very intense, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's very rapid. Is that, is that to your liking? Yeah, no, it's exactly, exactly falls kind of into, you know, what I like to do as a footballer, how I like to play the game. Um, obviously, it's very attacking here at Celtic. Um, I think the Scottish Premiership is a good, you know, kind of fit for me as well. A bit of a physical league, um, something that growing up in a bit of a British household has always kind of prepared me for. Um, so, no, it's something that, again, my family's super excited for, I'm super excited for. And, you know, it was just kind of a, you know, honestly, it was a match made in heaven for me. So when, when Celtic came calling, it was, it was a pretty easy decision. How big was the manager in, in the draw towards Celtic? Um, massive, to be honest. Um, I think, again... For myself, that, that relationship that you have with the manager, you want to make sure that you're not going somewhere where you're just going for the name, but you also want to go somewhere where you truly are wanted and you're in their plans. Um, and just by talking to him, we seem to have similar paths, even though they're different. You know, him, obviously, um, he's gone a bit of a different kind of pathway than most managers have. Um, and he understood what it's like playing in a bit more of an obscure league, you could say, with the MLS for Europeans. It's it's kind of a league that not a lot of, it's not obviously not talking talked about a lot over here. And um, him obviously being in the J League. Um, but I think also just talking to him, he could see how much he knew about the game 
how much he cared for just giving young players who had a ship on their shoulder an opportunity and also you know how he's done with his recruiting um, he's gone into kind of again those smaller leagues from all around the world he's found players that no one's ever heard of before necessarily like myself um, and hopefully that I can be another lo- one in that long line of players that he's brought over that you know have shown not only Scotland but all of Europe that they can play just talk to us about your World Cup experience what did that do for you your development and you know, just what was that like those, those couple of weeks yeah no it's special um, um, first time, obviously, you know, second time ever, but first time in 36 years that my country has, has been in the World Cup. Um, so just seeing that passion again, the growth of the game that we've had back in Canada over the past 12 to 24 months has been, you know, night and day. I've been there now in the national team for 24 months. And when I was there, the first couple games was during COVID. And, you know, we were playing down in Florida, for example, down in the U.S. in front of zero fans and maybe a couple media members um, to the very end of the qualifying when it was a fully packed um, stadium. Um, you couldn't go anywhere without getting recognized. And just that fever was there. And, and that's one of the cool parts about Canada is that we're so diverse, um, so multicultural, that that passion for football is there. But so often it's you cheer for your family of heritage, uh, your country of heritage, rather um, instead of Canada so it it was really cool to be a part of that just to see the passion um, and to hear all the stories coming back uh, from all the people back home about you know just how much it meant to them to see us on that biggest stage and for myself it was it was really important you know to go up against some of the world's best I think that Belgium game you know we showed right away that we do belong on this world stage of course to come out of that group stage with zero points is tough but you know, we look back on that group, Belgium, the number two team in the world, didn't make it out. And Croatia and Morocco right now are currently World Cup semifinalists. So um, it was a really solid group. We knew that. Um, we knew it wasn't going to be easy. But, you know, I think it set us up really well. And myself, we have a young group um, into 2026 where we're going to be hosting the World Cup. Um, so hopefully it'll be a great launch pad for that. How far back does your relationship with Scottish football as such go? Um, that's a great question. Um, so my dad's side's English and Scottish. Um, my mom's side, my mom was born in Northern Ireland. Um, so, you know, growing up in, you know, a UK household, football was always, you know, our main sport. We played a little bit of hockey in the winter, uh, which, which has brought a little bit of grit. You can't do that without living in Canada. You have to play some hockey. Um, so no, uh, my ch- entire childhood was, was waking up watching Premier League, watching Champions League, and, and of course seeing Celtic um, and some of those big nights. And, and you know, for me, it's always been one of those clubs that I've always been drawn to just because I always look at it like this. If, if there's a full slate of games going on in the Champions League and Celtic's playing at home, I want to watch the Celtic match. It doesn't matter who they're playing, just to see the atmosphere. Um, you can just tell how much more it means um, to this fan base um, and what those European nights are like. Um, and also, it's been cool. We have a couple players um, with the national team who have played um, in Scotland, and and they've just said, you know, the league's league's a blast. Um, and obviously, Celtic is, you know, the cream of the crop in the league. So, um, no, I've only heard glowing reviews, um, and you know, it's kind of cool to finally, you know, live out that childhood fantasy. You mentioned hockey there, but was that an option for you as a, as a full time profession? You know, I would have. I would love to sit here and say that it was, but it wasn't. My younger brother was the hockey player in the family. I was just out there to to jo- just go out there and hit people. That was my my favorite enjoyment that I got out of hockey. Um, so no, uh, it was pretty it was pretty obvious from a young age that yeah, hockey was just uh, going to be a fun pastime. While football was where you know my heart really was. So uh, I'm glad I ended up here. Glad I made the right choice to sticking with football. <laughs> you say you're out there to to hit people on the hockey field, and we saw you at the World Cup. And you're quite a physical player. <clears throat> Tell us more about yourself. Personally, though, your, your game, what, what kind of players would, would you model yourself on? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I've been told a lot of different players over the years. Um, one that often comes up in our my national team manager uses, John Herdman, he likes to say, uh, likes to say Dave Aspilicueta, Cesar Aspilicueta at Chelsea, just because, you know, the ability to play in a back three, back four, back five, um, that flexibility that he brings, just super consistent, um, Definitely, I have a lot of physicality to me. Um, I'm a pretty big fullback to a degree, but at the same time, maybe an undersized center back. So I'm kind of in that gray area there. But I'm someone that just loves to defend. Um, and I think that's something that everyone will see. For me, you know, putting in a, a big tackle is just as good as, as getting on the end of a cross, for example. But um, that's kind of what you're going to see from me is, is someone likes to get up and down, lots of balls into the box. Um, but at the same time, yeah, love to defend, live for it. What are your aims for this season and personally and collectively as part of the, part of the team? Yeah, you know, I, I think with where the team's at right now, um, we obviously have some goals. Um, 
haven't really discussed them all with the entire group to know exactly where everyone's head's at. But, you know, for myself, it's it's to really just acclimate myself with the group, um, see where I am, and, and hopefully earn some minutes um, come the second half of this season when I'm available in January. Um, that's obviously the goal. Um, but yeah, no, just keep doing what we're doing, honestly, at this point. You know, from watching from afar, it's been unbelievable this first half of the season. Obviously, it's not going to get any easier. Um, so hopefully if we can keep this, you know, this momentum going. Um, it's been difficult, of course, with a World Cup break in between there. It's a little different. It's it's an unusual year in that sense. So, you know, the plan is just to kind of keep the ball rolling, keep going with what's, what we're doing right now. Um, and obviously, if I can help in any way possible, I'll be more than more than happy to do that. How inspiring is it to see Josip Juranovic do so well at the World Cup? Is that mm-hmm. someone that you're now looking up to and you think, do you know what, I can go and do the same as him? Yeah, no, exactly. He's been, he's an unbelievable player. He was one of the guys when I walked off the pitch um, when we played Croatia, I thought, yeah, he's he's a top, top player. Um, just his ability to take space, um, you know, he just, he just sees space in front of him and he doesn't think twice, he just dribbles right into it and you're like, yeah, that was that was a great decision there again. But no, it's special. Uh, I think whenever you have a player, um, you know, I haven't really met him yet. But whenever you get a chance to see someone that uh, hopefully I'll be close with in the near future, you know, get to see them competing at this high, high level. And not only that, but representing your country as well. There's nothing more special. Um, so to do that at a World Cup, for him to be a starter, to be a massive part of that Croatian national team, um, and, and contributing out there as well. Um, I, I think it's really special for him, and it's only going to build on his confidence. And he's definitely a kind of a guy that I look up to as a fullback. Um, I think there's a lot of things from his game that I would love to add into mine. Um, it could definitely help me take another step altogether as a player. Was it quite difficult then not to get distracted at the World Cup? We've seen you give a, an interview, and you clearly looked very excited by the, yeah. the possibility of coming to Celtic. Was that quite difficult just to kind of think, do you know what, I've got a job to do here for Canada? Um, yes and no. At one point, it's it is Celtic. You're definitely thinking, my goodness, that's that's a massive club. I want to get that over the line. But at the same time, is you got a World Cup too. You never know when you're going to get back to one of those. Um, you know, we had three matches guaranteed in the group stage, and that was it. Um, and you know, obviously, we're going to be hosting in 2026. But at the same time, lots of things can change between now and then. You're not guaranteed that you're going to be on that roster. So for me, it was it was such a surreal experience. Um, and I think honestly, being out in Qatar helped a little bit. You know, being in a different time zone. Being being away from all the, you know, just the family and friends and all the other kind of stuff going on. Um, it kind of really helped me just focus on that. Um, of course, we would have liked to do a little bit better as Canada, so maybe we weren't fully focused. But no, this we, it, was, it was a really special moment. Um, and, you know, it was one where I'm pretty proud of our group because I think we all left it out there. Obviously, there was a ton of speculation going on for a lot of players just because, it's the ultimate shopping window of the World Cup. Um, and, you know, Canadian footballers, that passport, the Canadian passport has often been kind of overlooked. Fair enough. Um, but now, I think especially with a lot of the performances that we put in, a lot of people are going, all right, who is that guy? Who is that? Um, so I, I bet there was quite a few heads that were turned. Um, but no, the group did an unbelievable job um, just staying focused. Um, and that comes down to our leadership. So, no, we, we've got a really good head on our shoulders, um, thankfully, with the Canadian national team. And, you know, we'll build from that. Five-year deal here at Celtic, Alistair. What would make your five years, if it goes that duration, what would make that a success for you? Another five years after, probably, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, uh, of course, lifting trophies, that's something that that just comes to mind, first of all. Um, and, you know, another big thing that the manager's talked about is that he wants to continue to make strides in Europe. Um, I think for myself, just to see that continued development um, in Europe as well, um, you know, getting a chance to play Champions League nights. Obviously, I've never had that experience. Uh, I've seen it on TV here, and it looks unbelievable. So, you know, continuing to, to push on in that tournament would be special. But at the end of the day, um, winning the league is is extremely important. I understand that. Everyone understands that in the locker room. So for us, that's always at the forefront of our minds. Um, So yeah, lifting some trophies and then hopefully another five years after would be great.